everyone, this is Miss Dell. Today we're going to be doing dehydration synthesis of maltose. From the lectures, I hope you remember that dehydration means removal of water to make something. So dehydration is removal of H2O, synthesis means to make. In this instance, we are making maltose. Maltose which is a disaccharide. Disaccharide means two sugar molecules together. And for maltose, it is made up of two alpha. And remember, that is the sign for alpha, like a weird looking fish, two alpha glucose. This means we're going to be connecting two alpha glucoses together in the formation of maltose. When it comes to drawings and labelings of dehydration synthesis, we need to draw in a two-step process. The first one is reactant and process. The second one is products. When you do your first step, you need to label the reactants and you need to write down identify what process is actually occurring when i give you a question on a quiz or a test i will ask you in a form okay draw and label how a maltose is made or how a maltose is broken it is your responsibility to know the term that goes with making or breaking if we're making maltose it's dehydration synthesis you can also call it condensation reaction or you can call it dehydration reaction when it comes to me asking you how to break a maltose then you gotta say hydrolysis so we're gonna write down the reactants so the reactants as mentioned is two alpha glucose the process which is already identified on the top is dehydration synthesis. I will tell you all the other names that can go with that. Dehydration synthesis, dehydration reaction is another one. Condensation reaction is another one. And you could also say anabolism because anabolism is the making of more complex structures from easier ones or simpler ones okay so we have identified the two parts reactants process it's time to draw the reactants now so i hope you remember how to draw off the glucose if there's anything that you gotta remember about alpha glucose, it is the doo-doo. Okay, so off on the side, I'll just remind you the down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. Okay, so let's do our alpha glucose, which has a hexagon structure with a funky little extension on top so oxygen here c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 okay c6 your most forgotten carbon is over here on top making that chimney looking thing and then from here you're gonna go over the down down up down 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 up, down, up. Double check, down, down, up, down, up. Then come back around and do your H's to make sure that each carbon has four hydrogen. Not four hydrogen, my bad. Four covalent bonds. And if it's missing a covalent bond, you fill those in with hydrogens. Make sure your O's looks like O's, your oxygen looks like uh, ox, well, 
oxygens, carbons look like carbons. Let me make sure we have these. All oh, that is bugging me. So, oxygen. Okay. You got to do another one because it's made up two of the glucose. So, go ahead and do that. You can't go lazy. You cannot forget to add your H's, although it might be assumed. No assumptions here. Down, down, up. And then look what I just figured out. I miss an H. I miss an H. So I'm going to put that there. It's the most forgotten H. Just like what I did. But I'm not redoing this video over again. Okay. Four covalent bonds. Four covalent bonds. Double check right now. One, two, three, four. 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 All right, from here, you gotta show the process and I will do the process in a different color, maybe red. So the process will show me how the removal of water is done. And in here, you kind of can already see that the hydroxyl group will play a role in the formation of water. In fact, it's gonna be the hydroxyl group from carbon one and hydroxyl group from carbon four. But it is important to actually identify which oxygen from which hydroxyl group gives off the oxygen in water, H2O. And in this case, it's going to be the oxygen from carbon 1. So it's going to be this that will form H2O. H2O. Okay. By you showing that the hydroxyl from carbon 1 and the H from carbon 4 being taken away forming water, one water molecule, you have now shown me the process of dehydration synthesis. The next step is to make sure that your arrows actually has a sense of direction. If by any chance you just give me, and most people will do this, this, I have no idea what's happening. Are we, is water coming in? Is water coming out? You have to clearly indicate with a direction, an arrowhead, that water is coming out. Okay. All right. There is a next step in this process, and that would be forming the actual product. So we're going to move on and say product. The product is maltose, the disaccharide. So now that you have clearly labeled and written off your product as maltose, it's time to dry it. So again, the foundation is your alpha glucose. So we got to do that. Oxygen, C. Leave this off because this is going to be completely different. C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, and then C6. Come back around and kind of fill in the spot except for the chemical reaction that took place between carbon 1 and 4, I will show you that in a bit. Fill in everything except that portion. H's, H's, O, H, H. And then if by any chance you kind of forgot where your orientation of hydroxyl groups, that's down, down. Up. And make sure that oxygen is clearly attached to the covalent bond because again there's no ambiguous o's down down up 
down, up. Let's come back, fill in the H's. H, 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 H. I already filled in those H's and I've already forgot, for, filled in my most forgotten carbon. And then this is what's really different, okay? You, if you looked over here, okay, you just remove a whole entire hydroxyl group from carbon 1. And then you remove the H from carbon 4 hydroxyl group. What is left off? It's this. This oxygen from carbon 4 is the only thing that is left. Therefore, the two alpha glucose will be combined by an oxygen in the middle. Everything else continues from there. So you got carbon 4. So build it in. C3. C2, C1, oxygen, C5, connect, C6, okay? Now, again, do your thing, OH. This will have an OH down, down, here, go down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. Okay, there is something different here because remember, look, 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 you lost the hydroxyl group from carbon-4 and the only thing that's remaining is oxygen, so it's represented here. And then we got to, I just lost my hydroxyl group here. Okay, um, let's see, now come back with the H's, H, 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 there is an H here, H here. H here. I'm just going to redo the top here because the paper got cut off. So let me redo that. So C5. Wow, it erased a lot of things apparently. C3. Down, down, up. Down. And then C6. O H H H. Let me clean things up. Nope, not that one. Erase. There we go. All right. One last thing to label after this. Let's make sure my carbons are all intact. One, two, three, four. 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 <sighs> yep, every of covalent bonds. Four covalent bonds for carbon. Yes. We did. Oops, I want to change that to a different color so that you can see. Um, let's see, maybe red again. That and that. We have a special name for this type of bond. This is called 1 to 4 glycosidic linkage. It is a type of covalent bond found in carbohydrates. It's what connects one alpha glucose to the next. Okay, so when you're asking for, okay, what type of bond is formed specifically? We're going beyond covalent bond. We're identifying what type of covalent bond is formed between each macromolecule, actually in each monomer of each macromolecule. In this case, it is a 1 to 4 glycosidic linkage. The reason why, because the ones that play a role is carbon 1 and carbon 4 that actually forms that connection. Okay, This whole entire thing is maltose. That whole entire thing is maltose. It's a disaccharide made of two alpha glucoses. And that right there is a dehydration synthesis of maltose. In a two-part drawing where the products is the second part of your drawing. So as a quick review, you got first part with the reactants and process side, then the second part is product. It's always going to be like this anytime and every time that you're doing dehydration or hydrolysis of some kind of molecule.